Hello everybody, today we are going to be working on our Lois Elhart inspired bird collage picture. So for this project you're going to need two pieces of white paper. One is going to need to be a paper that is good for watercoloring on. Um, so something thicker, poster board, mixed media paper, or actually watercolor paper will work great. Um, the other piece can be a thinner paper, it doesn't matter. You're going to need watercolors or you can always use washable markers and some foil and use your brush to turn it into paint. I have a video of that on my channel. Um, so we have the watercolors, brush, water. You also are going to need a black oil pastel and then a bunch of varieties of other different colors. Um, you could do this with crayons as well. The only problem is when we do the tree part, uh, the crayon won't smear really so that might be a little bit of a tricky part but you can work around it but you will need some oil pastels of variety of colors um, and also a tissue or paper towel something we can smudge and smear with so let's get started with part one part two is going to be done when everything's dry and it's going to involve some scissors and a glue stick as well all right let's go all right part one is going to involve drawing your trees for your background we're going to be making some nice tall skinny birch trees so we're going to have our paper vertical and we're going to take our black oil pastel and we're going to draw a line going from the top to the bottom it does not need to be a straight line in fact a little bit of a wiggly or not perfect line actually looks really really good now I'm going to do one at a time. I'm not going to fill my page with lines. It's going to get a little confusing if I do that. So after I make my first one, I'm going to take my black oil pastel. I'm going to be making some marks on either side of the tree space. And a birch tree has these classic little marks on the sides that when smudged and smeared out, it looks really cool on the paper it really definitely looks like a birch tree now if you don't have oil pastel like i said you can just leave it with little dashes just like this um, but the oil pastel what's cool about that is when i take a tissue or a paper towel to it and start smearing just the areas where i created some texture i'm going to create these really cool fuzzy little marks that are going to further make it look like a birch tree and not just a white tree with some black random lines on it. So I'm gonna do that all the way down on one side. If you want to, you can also just do one quick swipe smudge on one side of the trees just to give it a little bit of a shadow, make it look a little 3D. Once you've done one, you're gonna repeat the process to do a second, a third, and even a fourth one. Do as many as you can fit on the page. I do recommend doing about three to four. So let's speed up and get these done. birch trees. So we're going to set this aside and we're going to get started with our next part. For the next part of part one of this collage project, we want to create some really colorful, beautiful pattern paper that we can use to cut out the shapes of our birds later. So what I'm going to do is use my different colored oil pastels and I'm going to be using some watercolor to create a really cool design here. So first I'm gonna take my paper and I'm going to divide it into four sections. You can do this by dividing it in half and dividing it in half again, creating some nice creases that allow you to see the four sections. You can also simply just take your pencil and draw a T on it to create four different grids. Now, each section is going to have some sort of pattern in it. I'm going to take an oil pastel and choose a color and I'm going to repeat some sort of pattern over and over and over again. Could be a shape, could be a line, it could be anything that I want. But the important thing to do is to make sure you're repeating it and making sure you're pushing down nice and hard. You can do this with crayon as well and it'll work just as great as oil pastel. You just wanna make sure you're pushing down nice and hard. Please remember to not fill up the whole space. You definitely want some white showing. 
if you don't have any white showing, there won't be anything for your watercolor to stick to, which would be a real shame. So fill in the whole space with repetitive patterns of either lines or shapes, but make sure that you are leaving some white space there for the watercolor to a stick to. Once you're done with all four patterns and you have four different colors in four different sections, you're going to get your watercolors out. To activate your watercolors, you're going to take your brush and you're going to dip some water into the colors that you think you might be using. This allows the watercolor to soften and to slowly mix with the water that's already in there so that it'll become really thick and a really nice paint to paint with. When you're ready to paint, you're gonna choose the color that you're going to use, and you're gonna make sure it's a color that's different than the color that you drew with. So in this orange space, I'm gonna use blue. I don't wanna use yellow or orange or even red because it'll be too close to the color and it'll blend right in. I wanna make sure that these are gonna pop out. So when I use my watercolor, you should see a really cool resist happen. This process is called oil resist, or if, it's, if you're using crayons, it's called a wax resist. And what you should see is the oil or the wax resisting the water and popping right. If you're not seeing that happen, it could be that your paint is too thick and you just simply need to add a little bit more water to your paint. And here we are back with everything dry and ready to go for part two. So make sure that your watercolor paper is totally dry. Make sure you have your trees and the other supplies you're gonna need for this particular section is a glue stick, a pair of scissors. You're gonna need a pencil or a marker, something you can draw with that will show up on your paper. You're also going to need a background paper. Now it could be just plain white, but if you have something colorful, that would be a lot more fun for our snowy scene. So first step is to cut out these trees and glue them down onto your paper. You may decide to use all of the trees that you drew or you may decide that you actually want to use two or three of them. So let's cut these out and get them glued on to our paper. So we have our trees glued down to our background. Um, you can see I tried to think about where my was going to be spacing them, how far apart they were going to go, and I settled on this sort of situation. Now to finish our background before we get ready for our birds, we are going to be needing um, a black sharpie or any other black marker, any black marker or crayon or anything like that will work just great. And you're going to want a white oil pastel. If you don't have a white oil pastel, try white crayon. It might not show up very well if it's a colored background, um, but you could also try paint or any number of things. So I'm going to start by using my black to create some tree branches. And I want to think about these branches as going up, growing up into the side. They don't grow straight out. Usually they grow up at an angle and then putting a couple little branches came, coming off of it as well. These branches are the branches that your birds are going to end up sitting on. So you want to make sure you have a few of them at least so that you can have your birds staggered throughout. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that they're not perfectly even all the time. You don't want them to be symmetrical and exact. It won't look very realistic if you do that. So adding some tree branches that are kind of a little bit misshapen or in different spots is going to really make this feel more realistic. Okay, now that we're done with these nice little branches, we're gonna add our snow. So I'm gonna take my oil pastel and I'm just gonna push down and create these little dots throughout the sky just to give it a fun, snowy, wintry feel. Okay, 
snow is done. Now we're ready for our last and final step, which is going to be adding our little birds. So we are going to use these different shapes to create our bird bodies, our bird wings, and then we're going to be using our Sharpie and other things to add details like beaks and eyes and feet. So let's get started. First step is to create the bird body. Now you can do this by drawing directly on the paper with your pencil, or you can flip it over and do it on the back so that you can actually see the shapes that you're making. The benefit to doing it this way though is being able to see what shape, what patterns are gonna be inside the shape that you're drawing. You can also instead draw your shapes with Sharpie or any other black marker. It'll create a really cool black outline to your body parts, which might add an extra layer of fun to your birds when we assemble them together. It's totally up to you. So what we're gonna be drawing for our bird bodies is basically a capital letter D, but with a little curve. So let me show you. I'm going to take my marker and I'm gonna draw a curved shape and then I'm gonna draw a rounded part to it. So as you can see, it looks like a capital letter D, but it just has a little bit of a curve to it. I'm gonna repeat this on all four of them. So I have some bird bodies on all of these shapes. Now I'm going to do some wings. A wing could be any sort of number of shapes. One way of doing a wing is to do a teardrop shape where you have a point at the top and it's larger on the bottom. You do wanna make sure that the wing is a good size to fit the body. So you don't want it to be too big or too small compared to the body. If it is, you can always cut it and trim it down or draw it a little bit larger instead, depending on what your needs are. Another really cool wing shape would be to start with the teardrop shape, but then instead of just coming down to one round shape at the bottom, you could do sort of a W or multiple waved shape at the end. So continue on until you have one wing and one body inside each patterned space. All right, now it's time to cut these out. So I'm gonna cut these out as carefully as I can. One little trick is instead of trying to cut it out into one big piece of paper, you could actually cut these out into four smaller sections. That makes them a little bit easier to deal with and it just helps you stay more organized. My bird bodies and my bird wings and I want to mix and match them together. I don't want to do the same wing on the same bird body, although you could. I just think it would look a little bit more fun and interesting if we swapped it up, maybe used a different pattern for a different wing for a different body. To create your bodies and your heads, you have to understand that the tips are either the head or the Tail. It doesn't matter which way is which, but whatever way you tilt up, that is going to be the head. Whatever way is tilted down is going to be the tail. Once you've arranged where the wings and the body are going to meet, you're going to glue them together. Next, I'm going to add some eyes so I can further identify which end is the head and which end is the tail. You'll also notice our poor birds don't have beaks or feet, but that's something we're gonna add once we get them onto our trees. Now, you'll notice that you most likely have a lot of extra scraps left over. Um, feel free to cut out more bird bodies and more bird wings and assemble them together to create a whole huge massive amount of birds that can fill your trees up. So, at this point now, it's time to figure out where I'm gonna put my birds. I want to make sure I put my birds in a space where they can be standing on a branch. And if I'm missing a branch and I really wish a bird was sitting in a certain spot, I can always add branches and redraw some. I want to make sure that my birds aren't clustered too close together. That's just a personal choice. And I like seeing them spread out a little bit. Once you make your decision of where they're going to go, you're going to pick them up and glue them down one at a time. It's 
time to add our final features, our beaks and our feet. You can do this a couple different ways. One way is you could just draw a couple little back lines to represent the little feet of your birds. You could also grab an orange oil pastel and draw some on there to create legs or beaks as well. Another way is you could actually cut out from construction paper some little yellow triangles which would make wonderful little tiny beaks for your little birds. And there you have it. Your adorable snowy bird collage is complete and put together. Um, I certainly hope you guys had fun making this with me. I know I definitely did and I really can't wait to see some of the beautiful variations that you've come up with floating all over the place.